Hi everybody and welcome to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. In this video I have a post for you from the subreddit Am I the A-hole with an extended update and then a fantastic malicious compliance. So if you want to go ahead and get started with today's stories then just use the timestamps below the video. Now let's get started with that first story. This post is from the subreddit Am I the A-hole and it's by user Throw Away for Life. Am I the a-hole for asking my boyfriend to charge his family member for fraud? Backstory I, 27 female, and my boyfriend, 34 male, have been together 5 years and have worked really hard to save for a house. Two weeks ago, we fell in love with a house and we put down an initial deposit to hold the property. The house won't be built until the end of 2022. We have been in talks with a mortgage broker and the builder's finance people. Last week we received some shocking news when my boyfriend's credit score came back as being bad. There was an activity on the statement that was 100% not his and a credit card that has gone into default over the last 6 months. This credit card was originally my boyfriend's but he swears he closed the account and cancelled the card mid-2019. Long story short, we discovered that a family member that was living with him a few years ago has gotten a hold of the card at some point and has been using the card on and off since 2019. They defaulted on payments in early 2020 but paid this off, then defaulted again in December of last year and the account is still in default and over $5,000 is owed in charges and late fees. Charges for shopping, news agency, takeaway food and pubs, gambling. My boyfriend has had zero knowledge of this as he hasn't had access to the account after he closed it and hasn't been receiving statements or notices from the bank. The family member has diverted these to their address. We're now unable to successfully apply for a bank loan for our house as they won't lend to my boyfriend with this credit the way it is. Our options are 1. Proceed with front investigations and charges on the family member allowing us to prove this is of no fault of my boyfriend's and successfully secure the loan. Or 2. Boyfriend pays the debt and we wait at least 2 years from the payoff date for his credit to regain some loss. Option 2 sets us back at least 3 years in starting a family and our lives as homeowners. This will also not allow my boyfriend to secure a bank loan to start up his own business he's been dreaming of starting for a few years. This was the year he planned on. This has devastated us and put a massive delay in our plans. My boyfriend doesn't like conflict and is going with option 2. He isn't even planning on mentioning anything to the family member. He wants it to all go away and thinks this family member is going through a rough time. I want my boyfriend to proceed with fraud charges and investigation. We have worked too hard to not have our dream house and him owning his own business. I feel I might be the a-hole as I might be pushing my boyfriend into doing something he doesn't want to do but his actions don't only affect him, they affect me and our future. I think his decision might be selfish but I think my option might be selfish also. I'm very confused and need outside opinions. So. Am I the a-hole for pushing my opinion on my boyfriend? OP, not only are you not the a-hole, but you are pushing for the right thing to do. That family member deliberately put your boyfriend in a horrible position. They stole from your boyfriend and actually tanked his credit. Forcing you two to be in a tough spot. You don't do that to family. Your boyfriend is either spineless or he's in on something weird here. I find it hard to believe, but maybe it's because I'm a natural a-hole, that considering the position that he's in, he's willing to pay off the debt and not mention anything to anybody, in particular this family member who put him in this position. No, I don't think that's right. But what do you guys think? Let me know what your judgement is in the comments section and now let's move on to the community judgement to see what they said. Dauphinip says, not the a-hole, but this is really someone you want to build a life with? Having this kind of baggage? He's willing to pay off a debt incurred by someone fraudulently and not even address it with that person. What happens if this person does it again? He's already taught them there's no consequences if they spend money they don't have. And then it will be tied to you as well. 
you need to think long and hard about whether this is something you want to deal with long term. I do think it's odd he's willing to pay for it and not address it with the person that incurred the debt. Are you sure the person didn't have permission to keep using it as long as they paid the bill? And Dopey responds, I have had these exact thoughts and I'm still battling with myself on what decision I make going forward. Because I agree, I'm not willing to let this person potentially do this again and it become my issue. My boyfriend swears to me he had no knowledge of this. He wouldn't have agreed to let this family member use the card as he knows this person isn't good with money. Zadie Doll says, Been there, done that with a family member destroying my credit, stealing money out of my bank accounts, writing bad checks, stealing my engagement and wedding ring to pawn it. I had to pay to get it out on the last day. He needs to do a report in order to fight with credit agencies and attempt to get these debts resolved. Also, place a fraud alert and lock his credit reports so no one else can use his identity. Not the a-hole. And Opie responds, we have already put a lock on his credit so no more charges or inquiries can be added to this account. This person has also used my boyfriend's identity to apply for payday loans. The credit card account has been locked also and card has been frozen. I feel right now it's still really fresh. We've known all of two days. I don't think my boyfriend is thinking clearly because it's not just the credit card lowering his score. It's all the other inquiries that have been made too. He needs the fraud report evidence to fight the rest too. Forthex to follow the rules says, Not the a-hole. If it was me, I'd think long and hard about staying with him if he chooses to. He'll always be a doormat. And there you have it. The community agrees that OP is not the a-hole, that they should proceed with the fraud charges, and that OP should reconsider her relationship to this guy because he's either on a weird thing or he's a doormat. Anyways, anyways, OP has given us an update that I curated and added information from the comment section to give it a lot more context than it would have naturally. So let's move on and finish this story with that. I want to begin by thanking everyone for their advice on my original post. There were some really constructive strategies and words of advice. I spoke with my boyfriend about my concerns and was honest with him that things he was telling me didn't all make sense. He was adamant he didn't know anything about the credit card or the apparent inquiries on his credit card account about payday loans. My boyfriend is still refusing to open any fraud investigations against his family member and has said he will pay off the debt himself. But some other things came out during our conversation that he was hiding from me. Lying has been a big issue of his during our whole relationship. He would tell me something and sometimes he forgot what he would tell me and say something different. When I would confront him about things not making sense, he would gaslight me and make me think I was imagining things and I would second guess myself. It would drive me nuts. In the past, I had forgiven him for his lies, but I can't keep forgiving the same issue every few months when he promises to change. But we're in the same spot every few months. And I'm not talking little lies. I'm talking big lies and even bigger lies to cover up those lies. I know I'm stupid for giving him the benefit of the doubt. So in saying this, my boyfriend is now my ex-boyfriend. When I spoke with my boyfriend about my concerns above, he ended up picking up his bag and walking out on me and drove away. That was the last time I saw him in person. This is how this man dealt with an issue in our five year relationship. We haven't spoken much since, but I have definitely resigned to the fact my relationship is over. I think he is expecting me to forgive him like all the previous times. I have packed up his stuff and will return to him after my city comes out of our sixth lockdown. There is a good ending to this story though. I spoke with my mortgage broker and the housing developers. I can't afford the original townhouse I fell in love with alone, but a smaller townhouse that I also loved came available and I've been approved for this one. I paid my deposit three days before my birthday last month. I bought a house by myself. I've gone very, very, very minimal contact with him. Only contact him regarding splitting and closing our joint bank account and him wishing me a happy birthday. I will need to contact him to return his things, but then that will be it, I think. 
I took control of our joint bank account and split the funds between us and closed the account so I wasn't tied to him financially anymore. I've worked too hard to get this place and won't let him come back and for me to bankroll his future. It hurts that our five years together has come to this, but I think it's for the best. He's made the choice to give up everything we've worked towards our whole relationship just to not cause conflict. He chose a liar and a fraudster over me and our future. It's been a roller coaster of emotions, but I am content and happy with how things have played out. I'm better off without the stress of the relationship and lack of trust. I got rid of him and got my future by myself. Good job OP, you've done fantastic. You ditched the dead weight and now you're relying on yourself. You'll be just fine, I'm sure of that. Congratulations. And you're getting what you wanted. You will become a homeowner soon enough and you ditched any sort of financial trouble you could have. So again, congratulations and all the best. Now let's move on to the next post. This post is from the subreddit Malicious Compliance and it's by user Deleted. Classmate is mad I'm forcing her to eat ethnic food? Go eat a loaf of bread. This happened about a year ago now when I was in high school. My calculus class was very chill, about 20 kids who were all friendly with each other, a laid back but enthusiastic teacher and a light enough workload that we could afford to goof off in class but still learn and do well. At some point in the year I got really into cooking, it's my stress reliever. My family couldn't possibly eat the amount of food I was making so I started bringing it to school and hosting Friday parties in my calculus class, with my teacher's approval of course. Now, I'm Vietnamese and I live in a predominantly white town. This is only important because it meant that most kids from town only ate American or European foods and weren't used to eating other ethnic foods. Last year, around Lunar New Year, I wanted to bring in some Vietnamese foods to celebrate. It is a very important time of year for my family. I ended up making a bunch of bandalon a steamed layer cake and a traditional Vietnamese dessert. Some of my friends from class found out I was going to bring in a traditional dish and brought in their own traditional dishes from their own culture, whether they celebrated lunar year or not. We had different Indian, Korean, Filipino and Spanish desserts. It was great and I was really excited that my friends wanted to celebrate with me. Apparently this was an issue for one girl in my class. I would say bandalon is an acquired taste, so when not a lot of people ate it, I wasn't offended. I knew not everybody would like it. There was a lot of other food anyways. During our lunch period, one of my friends, who wasn't in our class but knew I brought food in, overheard a girl from my class complaining about the food while on the lunch line. Apparently, she was saying really negative things about how I forced everyone to eat weird Chinese foods. Later that day, I texted her just saying I heard she didn't like the food and wanted to know why. I don't really care when people don't like the food. I make it for myself and bring it in when I have extra anyways. But her calling it weird Chinese foods when she knows I'm Vietnamese didn't sit right with me. Well, she texted back that it was rude of me to bring in weird ethnic foods that nobody would have liked except for me and said I should know better since most of the class was white. I told her that I bring in food to share because I feel like it and that I don't have an obligation to cater to her tastes. If she has an issue with it, she literally does not have to eat it. And other people can bring in food too, so if she wanted to, she could bring in something more to her tastes. After that, she just told me I shouldn't bring in ethnic and foreign foods and stick with American foods. Because we're in America. Excuse me? Like, how much do you wanna bet if I brought in jambalaya, which originated in Louisiana, she would call it weird foreign food? Fine. Does she only want to eat American foods? Then she can eat American foods. The next week, I brought in a bunch of olibol, a Dutch donut, and started passing them out at the beginning of class. When I got to her desk, I pulled out a loaf of Wonder Bread and plopped it on her desk saying, sorry, but these are Dutch, too ethnic. Here you go, all American cuisine. Later, she texted me asking what the F my problem was, 
So I told her that almost every single food I brought in this year was ethnic and that it pissed me off she only had an issue when it wasn't European. She's entitled to not liking Asian foods, but if you're going to complain about it being ethnic, then you better have that same attitude when the ethnic food is white. And especially, don't call another person's culture weird. She didn't complain about the food again. Also, before anyone comments, white bread isn't the only American cuisine out there. Here's a short list of what I've enjoyed making. Tater tots, jambalaya, fried chicken, many types of pies, s'mores, and Philly cheesesteaks. America is a very diverse place, and that's reflected in its food. Happy eating! Beautifully executed, I might say, that is a little bit between malicious compliance with a dash of petty revenge. Good for you, OP. And it's that time that we've reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed today's stories. I certainly did reading them to you. So if you did, then go ahead and give the video a like. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and become a member of our Discord community that just keeps growing and it is fantastic. And like I said in the beginning of the video, all of the relevant links are in the video description below. So be sure to check them out. And finally, I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to watch this video. It really does mean a lot to me that you guys enjoy this content. So thank you once again. And having said all that, I will see you guys in the next video.